example, I took a very simple example, the acetaminophen paracetamol. If I inject paracetamol in my device, that's the MS, liquid chromatography mass spectrometer, I can easily detect a, a piece of paracetamol in a glass of water because the concentration is very high and I have to dilute my water. It is the same for uh, plasma, it is the same for urine. We can decrease uh, the amount just to be in the good uh, calibration range. But if I have to analyze this molecule in a water sample, it is not the same. We have to purify and to concentrate our analytes in order to be able to detect it, to quantify it. That means that question is how to concentrate the analyte by limiting the extraction of other compounds because if I want to analyze the same river, I will have a lot of other compounds that compounds of interest. And the second question is how to develop a very uh, potentially uh, a very powerful method, but by respecting also um, the principles of green analytical chemistry. So what is green analytical chemistry? If we take into consideration the different elements of an analysis, it can be the operator, it can be the instrument, the reagent, the waste. Then if we look at the different part of our device, we can say that we can play from different uh, place by limiting, as an example, uh, the reactions that we need, uh, the size of the sample. And uh, in our lab, we try to develop a new method uh, allowing to decrease the size of the sample by like the miniaturization of our uh, analytical device. We try also to use a non-toxic reagent and also to automate the system in order to limit the contact of the operator with uh, all the reagents. So if we go back to what is analytical chemistry on how to extract compounds from water, the most common method is liquid-liquid extraction. It is just, just a partition between water and an organic solvent that has been selected to extract your analytes. And then you just have to evaporate your organic solvent and to analyze your extract. So it is a very put, a high potential method. We can obtain very high recovery, but for this, we need several ex uh, successive extraction as you can see by the, this uh, equation. And also, and this is a really uh, a very uh, important drawback, we need a high volume of organic solvent in comparison to the volume of water sample. This is the reason why we have to find something else to work. But we can use this method, but also we can have a look on the enrichment factor. Because what it is important for an analyst is to have a concentrated extract. Recovery can be important, but the concentration effect is also very important. And if we look at the equation of the enrichment factor, it depends on the ratio between the volume of sample and the volume of extract. That means that if we play to obtain quite good recovery, but a high ratio between the sample and the volume of solvent, it can be very interesting. This is the reason why such a type of method were replaced more and more by miniaturized device. It can be single drop nickel extraction. You just need a drop of organic solvent that you put in your sample, and then you will extract your analyte with this drop. Of course, it is not good for the recovery because of the ratio of organic solvent comparing to water, but it is quite good for enrichment factor. We don't work on this method. We prefer to work on the second method. This is a oral fiber liquid phase micro extraction. It consists in taking a very small fiber of polypropylene and to use this fiber that is filled with the organic solvent, and we push, we push, we put this fiber into the sample. A third method can be dispersive liquid liquid, liquid micro extraction. You will create a, a flowed state in your uh, sample in order to obtain small drops uh, that will be used as micro-reactor of extraction. In those cases, we have a low solvent consumption and it can be very interesting to the type of method. So as an example, to illustrate this method of hollow fiber liquid phase micro-extraction, we did not a method, it was for the DGA, for the defense, and we were interested in, in these very small uh, compounds. It is a uh, hydrolysis product of a chemical weapon. 
And if you want to extract this molecule, you can play on the fact that it is an acidic compound. That means that if you put your sample in acidic condition, if you put some organic solvent, not in the fiber, but in the porous membrane of your fiber, only in the porous membrane, and if you put water inside, you can use the water to extract water. You just have to uh, make a separation between both water compartments between your uh, small fiber. And by this way, it was possible to extract with an enrichment factor of more than 200 uh, our compounds. So it was very efficient. But if you look at how it works, you have to take a syringe, you put a fiber on the top of the syringe, it's quite not so easy to do. So the idea is try to try to automatize the device. For this, you know that we can buy such type of microplate in the in Jover, everywhere, if you want. And uh, some microplates are equipped with a very small membrane. Then we use this very small membrane to put our organic solvent on it. And then we use two types of plates, one with a type with the membrane, another one has only some wells. And then we can develop the same type of extraction method by making two compartments of water separate with this membrane. It worked very well. The ratio between the volume of sample and the volume of organic solvent was not the same. So we have a, a small decrease of enrichment, but in this case, we can operate uh, this uh, extraction with a higher, high throughput manner because we are able to, to treat uh, more than uh, 26 samples in less than two hours. In both development, we use octanol. Octanol is not the worst solvent that we can use in terms of green chemistry, but we decide to replace octanol by uh, another type of uh, solvent, it is a hydrophobic bitter thick solvent. You can obtain such type of solvent by mixing, as an example, a natural product such as cumarin or timon. You will obtain a new solvent, a new organic and green solvent. And with this method, we were able to obtain a very uh, green method. So in our case, we can um, evaluate the greenness of the method now with two, such as this one. If you are very close to one, you have a very green method. And if we look at the literature to expand this compound, it was the best method in terms of greenness. If we look at now dispersive liquid liquid technical extraction that consists in using the nanolegitin solvent as organic solvent for the extraction mixed with a dispersing solvent to obtain very small droplets, uh, we can extract a lot of uh, compounds. It was described by this man sitting here. But if we want to make the method greener, again, we can think about other solvents such as ionic liquid, dipotectic solvent, as I showed you before. But we can also use uh, other type of uh, solvent, other type of hypoal as an example, and this is what we have done recently. The objective was to extract 24 PAH, this is a polyaromatic hydrocarbons from serum sample. And the idea was to really uh, treat a very small amount of serum because we want to analyze cohort. And cohort is a, a sample that uh, comes from hospital and we don't uh, have the possibility to use huge amount of serum. So the idea is to miniaturize uh, the sample, but also the method. And using this method, you were, we were able to obtain a quite easy to manage method because by using one dodecanol, after putting your sample, your microdroplets in a ice bath, you will obtain a solid organic solvent. And then it is very easy to recover the solid organic solvent. You just have to put it in the methanol and then you can analyze your very uh, easy way to analyze very small uh, volume of sample. But as you can see, we don't use such huge amount of organic solvent to make this uh, extraction. This is last uh, some uh, development work that we have done in those uh, last years. But uh, my favorite word okay, uh, is to use solid phase extraction. Because uh, since a long time, uh, this type of uh, approach is existing because we have a lot of possibility to buy some cartridges like this. So cartridges are containing stationary phase, solid sorbent, 
And then by using this type of device, we can uh, work on solid phase extraction. This method consists in percolating a sample through the cartridge. If you select well the solvent, you will have a high retention of your sample through the cartridge during the percolation. You can wash the solvent and then <clears throat> to remove some compounds that are not well retained on your solvent. And then to select a small volume of organic solvent to disrupt the interaction between your compounds on your solvent and then to obtain an extract of your sample. It can be very interesting. The problem is if I apply this method to quite complex sample, we can expect such a nice chromatogram, but in the reality, this is this type of chromatogram that we can expect. That means that we know that there is certainly the compounds of interest, but if I only use a UV detector behind uh, my analytical column, after the separation, I am not able to distinguish contaminants on target compounds. Of course, you can, you can say, but don't use a UV detector, please use mass spectrometry. But if we use mass spectrometry with such complex samples, we have some decrease of the efficiency of the ionization when the compounds entering in mass spectrometry on the earth matrix. As an example, this is calibration curves that were um, obtained when purifying different types of complex samples, which is purified samples that were injected. And as you can see, we don't have the same sort, we have matrix support. So it is very dangerous to quantify these compounds with a, a calibration curve obtained in pure water, in, in spite of pure water. This is a reason why, since I am young in terms of analytical chemistry, I try to develop a new type of solvent to help me to find this type of solid program in the field of uh, globals. For young people, I can also say that it is quite difficult to find shine in such type of picture. So this is my job every day, is to try to find device to extract selectively only compounds of interest, thus limiting the co-extraction of other molecules. So for this, we play on molecular recognition. That means that we can use antibodies that can be immobilized onto solid solvent. If antibodies are able to recognize only target compounds, I will have, I will not have other compounds in my extreme. I can do the same using uh, oligosolvent, and I will explain what is oligosolvent, and also molecularly implanted polymer. Let's talk about immunosorbent. Uh, antibodies are very interesting because they are well known to have a very high specificity for the antigen. That means if I am able to produce antibodies against an antigen, my target compounds, I will be able to develop a very efficient immunosorbent. So I have to work on how to immobilize antibody onto a solid phase and then how to use it. To use it, I put again my solvent into a cartridge, but it's not the same solvent as before. It is a very uh, specific solvent, but the extraction procedure is the same. I percolate the samples through the solvent containing the antibodies. If I have the antigen in my sample, my antigen will be tracked by the antibodies. All the compounds that are present in my sample will be removed during the washing step. And then by selecting some things good to uh, elute, that means water during the sample preparation, washing during the water, uh, washing with water, and addition by being on a pH, during strength, or uh, hydroorganic mixture, I am able to disrupt the antigen antibody interaction and then to recover a very clean extract. You remember this chromatogram? It was obtained using conventional method, and this is a chromatogram that we can obtain using a purification step based on the use of a cartridge containing antibodies specific for the three compounds. So it's very helpful to analyze a very small amount of compounds. And in this case, we don't have any more matrix effect even in the mass spectrometry. So those devices are now very well developed in the field of toxin analysis to explain you why this is a procedure on your um, left that is uh, validated by access to analyze a toxin in yield. If you look at the procedure, it is a long procedure. 
liquidity liquidity destruction into the different step of treatment and then solid phase extraction on a conventional problem. So several steps to purify the toxin to remove the toxin from the sample. If you use if you use immuno extraction, you just have to take your milk to dilute your milk with a buffer, an equals buffer, and to pass your milk through the solvent, and then you will have a very clean extract directly. So non toxic reagent, not well miniaturized, and partial automation because uh, today we can uh, buy a robot that uh, manage for use uh, solid phase extraction process, not all the analytical procedures. We can automate our device by playing with a different type of uh, device. I will show you how. Uh, to illustrate the automation, I select this example. Um, in this case, we were interested to um, develop a method for this protein. This is Bush. This is British polymesterase. This is something that you have in your body. And uh, when you have a chemical weapon, uh, weapon attack, your, this chemical weapon will be attached to the protein. And then the enzyme, this is an enzyme, it doesn't work anymore. This is why we can have some nervous problem and so on. So the idea for the DHGV was to find how to develop a very efficient, fast method to detect this uh, exposure to chemical weapon. So the idea is to detect the small molecule, this small molecule, this small molecule, attached to this very big protein. So for this, first problem, the concentration of butylene chemistrias in the plasma sample is very low. As you can see, the concentration is much more lower than albumin in serum. That means that your plasma sample is mainly composed of albumin and not in bush. So to extract selectively bush, we decide to develop a solvent with anti-bush antibodies to trap selectively the bush. We know also that in chromatography, it is quite difficult to analyze huge protein, big protein. We prefer to digest protein into peptides because the analysis of peptides is much more easier. This is the reason why we also uh, develop a solvent that consists in immobilizing an enzyme, a protease, that is able to cut the protein into peptides. So two steps, extraction and digestion. For this, we are developing what we call IMO. And then once you have your solvent, you can pack it in a small preconance. On one, once you have the small preconance, you can connect the preconance to system of valves. And if you follow the animation, the first step consists in putting the sample in the device and percolating the sample through the immunosolvent. During this step, you can remove all the proteins that do not correspond to Bush. We only keep Bush into the system. Once the immunostruction step is achieved, you can transfer the protein to the IMR. Then you will digest the IMR into peptides. The peptides are retract onto an alcoholic conjunction solvent that we can buy everywhere. And then you can transfer the digest peptides through the analytical phenomenon on mass spectrometry. And with a totally automated system, we were able to analyze uh, the small peptides containing the chemical weapon in less than one hour instead of two days at the DGA. Why two days at the DGA? Because uh, they have a huge uh, purification step, not so efficient than antibodies. And just only the digestion takes one night. So it can be quite long to analyze this, to analyze this molecule. So automation is achieved. Partial uh, miniaturization, the pregnant are quite small, but we can go further I will, as I will show you. This is a result that we, we have for the DGA to show that the sensitivity of the method was much more better than the sensitivity that they have with a conventional solvent that is known to be specific for the brush, but not so specific because it was not possible with this potential solvent to detect all the compounds that we are looking for. The problem of antibodies is we need animals, we need mammals, we need times, and we are not, never sure that we will obtain the good antibodies. This is the reason why it can be interesting to find other way to work. 
For this, we are deciding to uh, study the possibility to use DNA sequence to selectively trap some compounds. It was described by uh, some groups uh, that uh, if you find the good sequence, some of them are very specific of a target analyte, and then the DS DNA sequence can change its conformation and then trap selectively your analytes. So we decide to uh, see if this uh, approach is a flow in us to, uh, to trap our analytes. Once you have your sequence, you just have to immobilize the sequence to a solid solvent. This is the way we are doing. And then to introduce your solvent again into a, a cartridge. And this is a recent result that we obtained uh, in collaboration with uh, an Italian group. Uh, they want to study uh, the possibility to detect uh, this toxin in uh, different types of uh, matrices. And then we propose them to develop uh, an oligosorbent for this toxin. There is one toxin, two metabolites of the toxin, and one compound that do not have the good structure to be recognized by the alternatives. And as you can see, after percolating and washing the solvent, if we focus on the elution step, we don't have the propazine molecule anymore because it doesn't have the good structure. It is not recognized by the DNA strength, so it is not retained at the end of the procedure. Mm -hmm. We can be sure by this way that we have a selective procedure. We check also the ability we have to be able to produce similar solvents. We check the capacity. That means the maximum amount that we can calculate through the solvent without overloading. And then we apply the solvent to a real sample, which was urine. And we can see that the recovery do not depend on the amount of molecule that we have in the sample. And as we can see also, we can easily detect the quite huge bit of compounds at a very low level of the concentration. So because we have a purification effect using the DNA strands. If you look at the literature, it is a quite new field of work. Uh, a lot of sensors have been already developed, not so much solid extraction device, and uh, there is not so much sequence already described for target molecule. This is an idea that we, we can find. You can have DNA strength specific of proteins of small molecules. And recently, actually, an example of Sierra Leone, that we, we are working on. And recently, our question was, is it possible to use this type of approach to analyze ions? Is it possible to have a DNA strength very specific of a given ions? So we focus our attention on cadmium ions. We look at the literature, and the sequence was described by the group. And then we decide to prepare the sequence and to immobilize the sequence onto a, a, a solvent. The problem is that it was not so easy to use because if we look at the different buffer that we use to put the cadmium and to study the retention of cadmium on the device, the first problem should be that in three mega it was not possible to retain cadmium. The second problem should be that in uh, all the case, we can retain cadmium but also cobalt. When we are able to retain cadmium in green, we have a red cross here because it means that we are also able to retain, to retain cobalt or uh, lead. It's not a good thing. It is not what we are we need. And at the end, if we don't put the good alternator on the cartridge, if we retain this cadmium, it's not a good thing also. So at the end, there is only one media. Don't ask me why. At that time, we are studying why. But this media is working well, and this is the result that we obtained with this media: strong retention of cadmium, uh, low retention of the cobalt and lead. They are lost during the percolation step, and no retention on the control solvents. That we, we are sure that we have a very speed, a very selective extraction procedure. This procedure was applied to uh, several samples. The first step consists in the digestion of protein just to liberate the cadmium, and we compare the direct analysis of the dilution of a, a diluted sample to a purified uh, sample. And again, as we can see, we have no more matrix effect in this case in ICP-MS analysis. 
And then we were happy, happy to see that we are also able to detect the good value when working on certified sample. The next step will be now to combine our very easy to use cartridge with a very easy to use device of detection and to remove ICPMX because on the last part consists in how to work as a chemist to develop without the need of mammals or without the need of people working on the app channels the sequence for their identification. How to use the possibility of a chemist to develop polymers, but not conventional polymer. This is molecular representative polymer. So for this, if my target is this molecule, I will put my target in a flask with monomer with a solvent. I can expect a complex section of my molecule with the monomers, if I select one my monomers. And then I just have to initiate the polymerization and then I will have a cavity that will form, will be formed around my complex molecule. And this cavity is corresponding in terms of functionality and structure to my molecule and only to my molecule. So I will apply a monolith, I have to dry it, to save the particles, to pack the particle in a cartridge, and then to wash my solvent after the synthesis to remove the target molecule to use my solvent to the sample value. It is the last step to reuse my sample. When <laughs> producing a polymer, I'm sure that I expect to have some specific qualities, but I know that I will have a huge surface that can also contribute to the retention. And this is not what I want in my selective procedure. This is why we are producing at the same time a non imprinted polymer. And this non imprinted polymer obtained without introducing the complex, so no cavities. This uh, NIP, non imprinted polymer, will be used as controlled polymer. And again, what we want to expect is a strong retention on the NIP up to the addition step and no retention on the NIP because they don't have any cavities yet. So when starting a project on NIP, we have to screen different types of condition of synthesis by changing the nature of monomers on a reactivity agent of solvent and so on to screen the possibility of retention on the different type of monomer and then to select at the end the good ones. In this example, we were uh, able to produce a nucleo candamazepine and to detect then this molecule at a very low concentration level in a water sample. We don't see anything in a total interference in my spectrum, but if we, if we focus on the signal given by uh, carbamazepine, you know, it is very easy to detect this molecule. And what we can see is if I use a conventional solvent that can, I can buy uh, from the company, okay, I have signal, but this signal is, uh, let's say it's um, very smaller than the signal that I can obtain because I purify my sample. This is, the reason is I decrease the noise of my instrument, and then I increase the sensitivity of my method. And then I remove also all the matrix effects that I can have using conventional solvents. So, is it possible to work on ions as we have, as we have, we have done with app numbers? Yes, we can. Uh, for this, as an example, we were able to develop uh, uh, ion-imprinted polymer for lanthanides. In this case, we take uh, one of the lanthanide as complex, and we look at the possibility to retain this lanthanide. As you can see, we have a selective extraction procedure concerning the retention of the uh, neodymium that was taken as complex. And then we check the possibility of this ion-imprinted to retain all the lanthanides. And as you can see, we have a high recovery on the intrinsic solvent, low recovery on the non imprinted one. That means that this is the retention is really due to the presence of specific cavities. But we can say, we can say, but peut-être it is only because we have cations, and this is perhaps ion exchange mechanisms. So for this, we study the analysis of complex waters packed with methanides. This water contains a huge amount of calcium comparing 
to the spiking level of Mampanan. And as you can see, we don't have any effect of the calcium because the calcium ion do not have the good uh, sites to enter the cavities, showing the specific retention of the Mampanans. So we produce a plasmic for different plasmic products, quite ex exhaustive list. As we can see, we are able to try to develop molecular infected polymer in green solvent. It is quite important to notice. And each time we develop a leak, we have to screen the synthesis condition. And at, in the most of the case, we select metacrylic acid as monomer. So my question is, is it really necessary to screen the synthesis condition? Because at, that, at the end, we always select Finally, if you look at the last line, it was not the case because for this molecule, if you use metacrylic acid, we don't have any selectivity because we have the same retention of the control on the non on the lead. But if we use the 4VP as monomer, we can obtain a very high selectivity and then a very good result in terms of analysis. So now I will finish with some slides on miniaturization. So I have solvents. I want to decrease the size of my sample. So I have to decrease the size of my device to treat the sample. And this is particularly interesting because now we are able to have new instruments in our lab, such as nano liquid chromatography. With nano liquid chromatography, we work on very small size column in terms of diameter. That means we are able to make some analysis with very small amount of organic solvent. We are decreasing by a factor more than 4,000 the amount of solvent required for one analysis. It is a very interesting uh, approach. But for this, we have to miniaturize our extraction device. So we have to leave the cartridge and to try to develop new device. And the, the way to obtain this is to produce directly our solvent institute in small size capillary. For this, we take a capillary of 100 diameter, micrometer, 100 diameter, micrometer diameter, and then we induce the polymerization directly into the polymer. In this case, it was a, a monolith that was produced using organosylene just to obtain some amino groups on the surface that was used in a second step for the grafting of antibodies of aptamers and then to develop miniaturized oligosorbent or immunosorbent. This was a big one for the DNA sequence, oligosorbent. So we just have to connect a small capillary online with nano liquid chromatography to treat the line. And we are able now to analyze a beer sample to follow to monitor the contamination of beer sample using only 250 nanoliter of sample. So if the beer is good, we can drink it. We only need a very small amount to detect such type of molecule. And if we compare this is a beer containing ocratoxin A or buffer water, pure water containing ocratoxin A, you have the same signal. That means that you have a very uh, selective extraction device. And if we sum up all the solvents that we need for this analysis, we only use one microliter of solvent for all the analysis. So I hope I can you about the interest. Of the miniaturization. We have done this for molecular imprinted polymer. We just have to develop directly the monolith, the imprinted monolith, into the capillary to connect again the monolith to the nano LC to check how to distinguish lip and lip to be sure that to have a very selective procedure and then to apply it to the real sample. In this case, we were able to detect cocaine using only 50 nanoliter of sample at the concentration that correspond to the concentration that have to be detected in real samples. If you look at this chromatogram, I am a chromatographist. I like columns, but they are very expensive. And if you want to use a column, you have to use a pump that is also very expensive. So the idea, when I have only one component in my chromatogram, do, really, do, do I really need a separation method? No, because I have only one. So 
when using such very small specific solvent, you can directly connect and remove nanoacid, remove a uh, pumping system, and then to connect directly your monolith to the UV detector and to obtain very uh, easily uh, a very selective method. We can really have a very simplified system and non expensive system to follow uh, our target in very complex and so So I hope that I convince you by the fact that we work well on the finding how to remove all the organic solvents in our procedure and to keep high potential metal because it's, it's very easy to, to render your method very green, but you have to obtain metal that is as performant as the one who needs a lot of something. The problem is today is this sometimes quite difficult to remove LCNS from the system because you need the sensitivity of LCNS. But I show you a previous example that it can be possible. But for this, we need very specific tools such as antibodies, actinos, intensive polymer, and etc. While uh, you are working every day in the lab. So, thank you for your attention. And this is an idea of my my book with uh, the students that we have at the time in the lab working on this topic. So not all, some of them are healing doctors. Some of them are. Thank you very much. <laughs> we have I hope that it was not too much against uh, the stream and well, all the questions here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm Mon, I'm now in the Nepal in consulting and also the field in the organics and neurons in short, the collection of the system. I'm very interested by your. Uh, I have a question about the use of your method uh, in the water treatments. If you think of this selectivity for a specific compound, it is also maybe a kind of kind of approach to treat the water and to the plant. The problem would be the cost of the nuts because uh, it's not so, uh, mm -hmm. It's quite expensive to pick up uh, such a uh, small amount. Uh, if you look at aftermaths, aftermaths are high cost. So uh, in our case, we can reuse it, but for water treatment, we need a huge amount of solvents. It's not so easy to, only that, to, to imagine that we can apply a huge amount of solvent to a huge volume of water. Yes, or oh, if you target a very uh, specific molecule that is really uh, work, uh, work to be to be removed at the high cost, it depends. It depends on the target. Some target mm -hmm. might be maybe work to 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 try to pass it to same one and that. But the problem of water contamination is uh, that uh, there is so many toxic compounds that perhaps <laughs> I don't want to be sensitive. <laughs> I'm not sure to find one, one target that is so important. I'm afraid that there is so many. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, this is for your presentation. I, don't know I had a question about your uh, DNA and RNA separation. Uh, how do you grow or take out uh, your RNA from? And uh, how long does it take to make that? Grow or I, maybe I missed it. No, no, because I, I want to. I, I think that I was late, so I escaped this part. Sorry. Um, when you want to select an afternoon, you have to just buy a library, a huge library, and then you have to uh, use your target. This is my target. I put a lot of different segments of DNA. I buy the library on Sigma. I put this sequence on the target, and uh, I will only retain DNA sequence as, 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 as an activity for my target. But if you do it one time, we have a lot of DNA sequence. And then there is a, simple, a system of cycle mm. that you recover the, the good sequence, you produce the sequence that disappear. 
and you do it again, but by changing the condition in order to like change the pH, the so unit strength, and so on. And then at the end of several cycles, you only will have on your target the DNA sequence that have a very, very high pH. But it is not what I'm doing. I, uh, I don't have enough uh, people in my lab to try to give up this part. This is uh, well uh, done by other groups. So I just have to wait for sessions that works well for my targets. But in my lab, we are working on proof of concept. So. And there are several DNA sequences of that, that are almost the same as how we use the tools. In fact, sometimes we have uh, two, three sequences that have the same, but it, you, you take the, the ones that give you high recovery on good specificity. The, the advantage of DNA comparing to antibodies is also the fact that imagine you have three seconds at the end that is uh, bound to your targets. And if you try to see if this second has an affinity for another target that is very close in terms of structure, you put that as an example for cocaine. Cocaine, he has a metabolite, it's vasodilatory. But cocaine is found in serum, vasodilatory is not found in urine. If you only want something specific of cocaine, if you don't want to recognize vasodilatory, you take your three seconds and you pass it uh, the, the sequence to vasodilatory uh, molecule. And you keep the sequence that do not recognize. So you can select exactly the affinity that you want using Athena. For antibodies, uh, you use an immunogen, you inject this to mouth, and you are waiting for the antibodies to you because the you know, the good one. Uh, I have two uh, two, uh, two related questions. So the, the one on the atomers, I mean, of course, you, you didn't show that, but I was wondering the selection process, how much uh, uh, how much it can depend on the, the matrix. Uh, basically, you, you have your target on, in something, and, no, and that something well, may, well, may change the interactions. The sequence, mm. it is true of targets. Uh, yeah, yeah, but then, then you apply your yes. atomer. Uh, to your sample. target in a real sample. Yeah. And so I guess the interactions between the atomer and your target are it's not the same. It's very strong. Okay. It's not affected by, it's not affected no. by these parameters. Uh, it is other. If you um, uh, manage the pH of your samples, okay. you just have to control because sometimes, uh, uh, for, as an example, for ophatoxin A, we develop uh, this type of approach for ophatoxin A. If you don't give calcium to your DNA sequence, it doesn't work. Okay. Because the sequence has a specific conformation, mm -hmm. this is what we call G quadruplex, mm -hmm. and to form G quadruplex, you need calcium and magnesium. So we just have calcium in the sample before the calculation, and it works. Whatever it is, uh, solid stripes, and we will say, and they will one. That's my sample. It was not the same for the other element. We test different buffer, different pH, the entire world, okay. always. Okay. Well, and again, it's not the same. Only one but only one. Yeah, that's it. So that's a magical <laughs> pattern. Yeah. Later, it's very difficult to And so the second question is about the MIP, which, yeah. which is another magical thing. I mean, uh, uh, so basically, you have your target, you mix that with some polymers, mm -hmm. and you end up with some um, um, particles, basically, on, where you have a selectivity based on the on the steric yeah, or not yeah. just steric. Um, and I was wondering, so uh, again, similar to, similarly to the atomers, do you, do, you, do you think there there is some diversity in, in the thing you produce? Because here you don't have a selection no. phase. And so do you have some diversity? And do we you have think... a diversity in the monolith in terms yes. of shape of density. Okay. It is a not a, a very homogeneous units. You have some well-formed qualities, but you have also some not so well-formed qualities. That means that if you study the capacity of your solvent, you will see the curve like that, and then like that, mm -hmm. and then like that, because you you have different type of qualities. The importance is to develop a procedure that uh, exploit exploit le, the good qualities. The strongest, mm. but it is not so difficult. This is what we play with the nip. 
once having no, no retention on the lip, first you can be sure that you are working with a good case. And so the lantanides, what I get is that you don't have a selectivity among the lantanides, right? It's, yes, it's it's working it's the a same. specific family. Okay. If I do the same, I have done the same for copper, nickel, zinc, it's not the same. Okay. You cannot have a copper device that able to uh, to, to fix uh, all the transition metal. It doesn't work. Lantanide is very low. Uh, Specific for me. Yeah. For me, your own experience, what would be the, same, the best possibility for extracting some metabolites of importance in like curing? Uh... Uh, if I have antibodies, I buy antibodies, I know that it's ready. Because you put water, you wash with water, and you read it with an hydro and you say it's very well. If antibodies are not the best, I'm not sure between aptamers and milk at that time. If I want to develop a non expensive solvent, maybe. If I want to develop in a, with an easy manner solvent, aptamers. Because now we, how, we know how to bind the aptamers. So if the aptamers works well, we have an eye affinity, it's quite easy to develop the procedure. For me, it takes a long time for the synthesis or the screening condition. And then it is not finished. We have to develop the selective extraction procedure. So it works well. But sometimes you have three washes that with uh, acidic conditions to just to exploit the chaos. And it is not solved. But in terms in term of the price, uh, MIP or less. So this is why we are working on the three device. We're still working on the three device. And how do you know that the chemicals are not so well for you are answering carrying If you uh study isotherm uh, adsorption isotherm can easily detect the fact that you have uh, several uh, constant and then uh, several type of chemicals. Is it more qualitative than quantitative? I mean about uh, if you need to have a uh, a really uh, nice quantification of how many it is quantitative. Quantitative. It's really quantitative. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, yes, this is why I I, uh, I showed you that we were able to obtain uh, repeatable results. <laughs> but also when we prepare several cartridges, we, we, we took two students, we give the receipt, and we said prepare the cartridge, and this is the result we obtained for two independent synthesis. But uh, this is very quantitative. Whatever the <laughs> not whatever the student is. No, no, no. 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 <laughs> no. If you want to publish, you select the student. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we are also in a challenge to detect the uh, actinides in uh, water. And in, for instance, radium, radium. There have been some, uh, some trial to pre concentrate the radium to measure it with ICT NS. We work on it. We have a we, we have a collaboration with uh, IASM. Yes. And uh, we work on it. We have uh, two papers showing that it is not so easy to develop. Why? Because you cannot use radionuclide uh, as a template. Yeah. And because it is a little bit too toxic. <laughs> so the problem is that uh, you find a template that is quite similar to your radionuclide. And then uh, to try to work on it. So it was quite good. I can send you the, the paper. It works uh, quite good, but not so well as the uh, Yes. Not an ad, you can do one of them and you produce an update for uh, The problem is the conflict. Really, the, 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 the conflict. 
But we had also some problems for environmental topics such as carbamazepine. So if you have to look at carbamazepine in river sand water, to be sure that you will find it, but at a very low level, when you produce a meat, you will use huge amount of carbamazepine. Then, uh, when you use the meat after washing it, you have to be sure that there is no more carbamazepine. Uh, uh, so this is a reason why I don't pass time on it, but this is a reason why we don't use carbamazepine. We use an analog, mm -hmm. an analog of carbamazepine that is not recovered in sand or in water of water. And then we develop the cavity with this analog to be sure that even if there is less than 0.0.001 percent, not a problem. The, the, the amount that are still in the meat are very, very low because we wash the meat before we do it. But 0.0001 percent can correspond to the contamination of the person. This is the reason why, when developing uh, now solvent meat for real application uh, in trust uh, level, we need to clean. This is the reason why we can expect that this barrier is, is not level. Oh, no, no. But it's not so easy. In terms of uh, really uh, chemical analysis, do, do you use ethanol as a fast mobile? No, because of the viscosity. Okay. So I prefer to miniaturize than to replace uh, acetonitrile or ethanol uh, or methanol by ethanol. The viscosity is higher. But in uh, so we have a student, excuse me. And it's the high pressure. Yes. It's it developed the... our system. The pressure is dropping in our instruments. But in our, uh, I have a student in my lab, in a PhD, with a collaboration with a small company that wants to develop an analytical device for on site analysis, monitoring of pesticide. And we, are, we have to develop a synthesis in green solvent and an extraction procedure in green solvent. So we replace methanol by ethanol because in during the using when using the cartridge it's not a problem. But chromatography is not fast. Yeah. 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 Yeah